What governs the code of conduct of uh, judges in the Philippines today is the so-called the new code of conduct for the Philippine judiciary. But have you ever asked yourself what we had prior to this new code of conduct for the Philippine judiciary, the Bangalore draft? Let's begin with the coming of Magellan to the Philippines. What do we have? When Magellan came to the Philippines, basically it was Miguel Lopez de Legazpi deciding cases in his capacity as governor general. And uh, basically later they created also more courts, uh, including the so-called Audiencia. And uh, the discipline, discipline for judges was uh, limited to just uh, allowing them or having them to pay for wrong judgments or for uh, abuses in uh, the conduct of their duty as judges. Then came the Americans and of course the Americans implemented a new system based on the American justice system and uh, we had in the Philippines at that time the code of civil pr procedure and basically in that code judges were not allowed to sit in courts where they have some monetary interests. And if they were related to uh, parties appearing before the court up to the sixth degree of consanguinity or affinity. Then uh, later in 1946, we had the canons of judicial ethics but the problem with the canons of judicial ethics was that these were just guides to judges and uh, there were no penalties specified in the canons and so in 1988 former chief justice elario davide who was chief justice at that time created a committee in order to correct the defect and uh, they came up with uh, a recommendation until this Bangalore draft came. And uh, how did the Bangalore draft come about? In the year 2000, the United Nations Center for International Crime Prevention gathered chief justices from different countries, including senior justices, in order to discuss, because the, the, the United Nations Center for International Crime Prevention believed that if we have to prevent international crime, then we should tap the different judicial machineries from all over the world. And so the first group, the group of judges that were convened at Vienna in the year 2000, they were instructed to gather the codes of conduct from different jurisdictions and to get the core values in order to come up with their proposal so that more or less we could have a uniform code all over the world, or at least those countries joining or signing the draft. And so during the... So in April 2000, on the invitation of the United Nations Center for International Crime Prevention, and within the framework of global program against corruption, a preparatory meeting of a group of chief justices and senior justices was convened in Vienna in conjunction with the 10th United Nations Congress on the prevention of crime and the treatment of offenders. So it all came about, our Bangalore draft came about because of the effort of the United Nations Center for International Crime Prevention to avert, to curb criminality all over the world. And they realized that in order to do that, they just had to tap the judicial or judiciary machineries in different jurisdictions because they realized that in many countries across all the continents, many people were losing confidence in the judicial system and so they took the law into their own hands at the initial stage recognizing the existence of different legal traditions in the world they decided to limit limit the exercise to the common law 
legal system. So accordingly, the initial participants were from nine countries in Asia, Africa, and the Pacific, which applied multitude of different laws but shared common judicial traditions. So represented were Bangladesh, India, Nepal, Nigeria, South Africa, Tanzania, Uganda, and they called themselves Judicial Integrity Group. First, it agreed that the principle of accountability demanded that national judiciary should assume an active role in strengthening judicial integrity. How? By effecting such systemic reforms as are within the judiciary's competence and capacity. Second, this group recognized the urgent need for a universal acceptable statement of judicial standards, which consistent with the principle of judicial independence would be capable of being respected and ultimately enforced at the national level by the judiciary without intervention of either the executive or the legislative branches of government. Now, so the urgent need for a universally acceptable statement of judicial standards. Now we have it now, the Bangalore draft, we call it in the Philippines, the new code of judicial conduct for the Philippine judiciary. Accordingly, they requested that codes of judicial conduct which have been adopted in some jurisdictions be analyzed and a report be prepared by the coordinator of the judicial integrity group. I will just run through with all these source materials which uh, the core group uh, considered in coming up with the draft. Here you go. We have the code of conduct in Bangladesh, Canadian Judicial Council, Chief Justices Conference of India, Iowa, Kenya, Malaysia, Namibia, New York, Nigeria, Pakistan, no need to memorize, but at least there you go. We have our own code of judicial conduct with the Philippines, September 1989, and our canons of judicial ethics of the Philippines in 1946 was also considered. We have the Yandina Statement, uh, Solomon Islands, South Africa, Tanzania, Texas Code of Judicial Conduct. Look at that. So many source materials, Code of Conduct for Judges, Magistrates, and other Judicial Officers of Uganda. Then we have also uh, one in the United States. We have uh, in Virginia. We also had State of Washington and the Parliament of Zambia. And we also had regional and international instruments. Like, there you go. The draft principles on the independence of the judiciary. Call it the Syracuse principles prepared by a committee of experts convened by the International Association of Penal Law, the International Commission of Jurists, Center for Independence of Judges and Lawyers. We have also the minimum standards of judicial independence adopted by the uh, IBA, International Bar Association, that was in 1982, and the United Nations Basic Principles on the Independence of the Judiciary, endorsed by the UN General Assembly in 1985. Look at that, Draft Universal Declaration on the Independence of Justice. We had the Beijing Statement of Principles of the Independence of the Judiciary, the Latimer House Guidelines, European Charter on the Statute for Judges, Policy Framework for Preventing and Eliminating Corruption and Ensuring the Impartiality of the Judicial System. And then the second meeting of the Judicial Integrity Group. Remember the first meeting was in Vienna. The second meeting was held in Bangalore, India. It was in 2001. Now, at this meeting, the group proceeding by way of examination with a draft placed before it identified core values. Then they formulated relevant principles. Then they agreed on the Bangalore Draft Code of Judicial Conduct. That's why we call our 
present uh, new code of conduct for the Philippine judiciary as a Bangalore draft because the final draft the, the, the final draft to be proposed was done at the second meeting at Bangalore. The group recognized, however, that since the Bangalore draft had been developed by judges drawn principally from common law countries, it was also essential that it be scrutinized by judges of other legal traditions to enable it to assume the status of a duly authenticated international code of judicial conduct and not just a code of judicial conduct for common law countries. This meeting was attended by Chief Justice. You, know, you have your long list of Chief Justices that attended the meeting at Bangalore. Then came after the consultation process over the following 20 months, the Bangalore draft was disseminated widely among judges of common law and civil law systems. It was presented to and discussed at several judicial conferences and meetings attended by chief justices, as well as senior judges from over 75 countries of both common law and civil law systems. Now, on the initiative of the American Bar Association's offices in Central and Eastern Europe, the Bangalore draft was translated into national languages of Bosnia and Herzegovina, Bulgaria, Croatia, Romania, Serbia, Slovakia, and then reviewed by judges, judges associations, and constitutional and Supreme Courts of the region, including those of Kosovo. Their comments provided useful perspective. Finally, in 2002, at a meeting in Strasbourg, France, the Bangalore draft was reviewed by the Working Committee of the Consultative Council of European Judges. Now we have here a long list of those who were involved in that. Then the published comments of the CCJEGT on the Bangalore draft together with other relevant opinions of the Consultative Council of European Judges, in particular opinion number one, on standards concerning the independence of the judiciary made significant contribution to the evolving form of the Bangalore draft. In fact, our canon one would be independence. The Bangalore draft was further revised in light of the draft opinion of the CCJE on the principles and rules governing judges' professional conduct, in particular, ethics in compatible behavior and impartiality, and by reference to more recent codes of judicial conduct, including Guide to Judicial Conduct, published by the Council of Chief Justices of Australia in June 2002, model rules of conduct for judges of the Baltic states, and then the Code of Judicial Ethics for Judges of the People's Republic of China and the Code of Judicial Ethics of the Macedonian Judges Association. Now, the revised version of the Bangalore draft was placed before a round table meeting of chief justices from civil law countries held in the Peace Palace in The Hague, Netherlands. You know, the Hague, Netherlands is the seat of International Court of Justice, okay? And here we already had at attendance our very own Chief Justice Ilario Davide of okay. the Supreme Court of the Judiciary. Assisted by, in our next video, we will look closely into the canons of the new code of judicial conduct for the Philippine judiciary the Bangalore draft. Thank you for viewing. I'm Attorney Father Dan de Los Angeles. God bless.